Okay, everybody, welcome. And I would like to introduce my friend, colleague, and former scuba diving student, Jeffrey Mona, who is a marine, yeah, hey, a marine geologist at the University of the Philippines Diliman Marine Science Institute, where he's right now, correct? Yeah. Hi, everyone. Uh, it's an honor. Yeah. Thank you, Klaus, for uh, inviting me for this talk. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, uh, thanks for coming okay. on. So I filmed a video uh, a few days ago underwater in Apo Island in the Negros province of the Philippines. And I would like to. Uh, so there's a, is something interesting going on in terms of volcanic activity, not in terms of the biology. So I would love to have your uh, comment. And so let's, can we start the video on your screen? Yeah. All right. So we see yes. a lot of bubbles, correct? Okay, let me, sh okay, are you sharing your screen? No, wait, okay. ah, it's probably easier if you look at the video on your screen. Okay, uh, um, I, I had to share my screen, I think. Well, actually, I can I can share my screen, but yes. let me do that in a second. Uh, yeah, so. so this video is just from a few days ago. Here it is. Uh, it's from a few days ago. Uh, let me go screen share, screen share apps. I cannot find uh, the screen. There's whiteboards. Uh, share screen, of course, right in the middle. Yeah. Okay, here we go. So, uh, what are we looking at here? So, essentially, there are um, outgassing of uh, bubbles from the seafloor. So, this is in Apo Island, right? In Negros? Correct, correct. Yeah. Very interesting. And, um, you know, the Negros Island is a, a volcanic island, mainly a volcanic island. It's a host for a lot of active volcanoes, such as uh, Mount Canlaon. Yeah. And it's actually a chain of volcanoes created by a, 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 what you call it, an arc, Negros Arc, actually. Yeah, yeah. So... We, we we're really expecting a lot of volcanic activity here. And an interesting note in that video is that aside from the bubbles, it's quite more or less the uh, biological activity, right? Absolutely. So, that, that was one observation I wanted to ask you about. Yeah, it, it's the void of, uh, not, not the coralline one. So maybe there are biological activity there, but not the corals or... Maybe very algae, yeah absolutely algae. very little there are no occasionally there's a sea cucumber but as you pointed out you don't see corals you don't see sponges so would you think that these gases are actually inhibiting the marine life there yeah exactly so what happens in these gases is that um it's very very acidic mm -hmm, they, mm -hmm. they make the water very acidic around it because it these gases contain uh, CO2, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. H2S, yes, yeah, yeah. so a combination of the geochemistry of that place will make it very acidic. Yeah. So if we're expecting any kind of uh, biological activity there, maybe some very resistant species, yeah. maybe microbes, yeah. algae. Yeah. So, so yeah. to come back to the gases, you are there in yeah. in prop Negros proper in Valencia. There is mm. a area where there is a geothermal vent, which is clearly uh, hydrogen sulfide, right? H two S, and yeah. um, you can smell that, right? You you uh, pointed that out in a previous discussion we had. So this is this rotten egg smell, right? Yeah, and, exactly. Yeah, and underwater, obviously, you're wearing a scuba mask. You cannot smell that. But you would think it's H2S and a carbon dioxide or a mix of both. This is your uh, speculation? Um, yeah, this is a speculation. So this has to be tested, of course. Mm -hmm. And maybe the, the area's vicinity mm -hmm. to a volcanic 
center mm-hmm. may, it the more it has a sulfides sulfide ah, component interesting uh, interesting component. yeah yeah and it also happens when you're monitoring volcanic activity so when there's an increased volcanic activity you're expecting more sulfur in, yeah. in the composition of the gases and the liquids coming out of a volcano so yeah not necessarily that there's a volcano underneath Apo Island. Yeah. It's not necessary, but the the whole Negros area is a volcanic uh, volcanic uh, park. So there's a lot of magmatic activity underneath the crust. Yeah. So it will so it's not directly it's possibly not directly a magmatic activity. Yeah. But it's more like a degassing activity from on top of the magma. Very so interesting. It's like mm-hmm. a, uh, so it's like imagine the magma is like uh, if you're opening a bottle of coke. Yeah. And the magma is the coke, and then there's it doesn't have it doesn't have the it has it doesn't have to be the coke gushing out of the of the can, but yeah. you just have to lower the pressure over the, the yeah yeah coke. yeah. And when you open the coke, it will bubble up. So it's, Absol- it's a similar situation. Yeah. So now, now one thing I wanted to ask you about. So I've been diving. The first time I was diving in Apo Island was in 2014, and I've been to this site repeatedly. I have the impression that the field with the bubbles shifts around on the order of, uh, you know, tens of meters. What, uh, what is the explanation for this potentially, in your opinion? Mm, okay. There's a lot of possible factors here um, because when uh, gas gas and water is mm-hmm. uh, going up from the magma chamber or whatever geothermal field mm-hmm. is underneath the negros, um, it interacts with a lot of things. First, when it's in, in the ocean, it can mm-hmm. interact with the tides. So it depends on, it depends on how much uh, tide influence is there, so it, it can uh, affect how much uh, of the groundwater and the gas is coming out of the seafloor. And since Negros uh, is an active uh, chain of volcano, especially uh, Mount Canlaon, mm-hmm. it's possible that, um, you know, Mount Canlaon is very active. So. There's a lot of uh, in and outs, a lot of activity within Mount Canlaon itself. It's possible that there's a switch in how the uh, magmatic water is yeah. uh, moving between between within the magma chamber or within the crust itself. Yeah. So, so maybe, so, mm-hmm. so so maybe the... for example, like if Mount Canlaon will um, explode. Uh, that that will release all the pressure towards mm-hmm, Mount Canlaon. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That will um, lessen, maybe L- lessen. lessen. It, yeah. Okay. So so basically, yeah. there could be a reason tied to the volcano, but there could also be a reason yeah. tied to the the tides and the uh, the yeah. bottom composition in Upper Island. Ha! Huh, very interesting. Now, one yeah. more question. So. Uh, for the for the biologist, uh, you know, so as we've pointed out, there's very little in terms of macroscopic organisms, but for for a microbiologist, that would really be interesting, right? So potentially there would be, um, you know, lithotrophic uh, bacteria. So bacteria, it's it's possible that bacteria live off H two S, correct? Yeah, correct. So it's very. Um, likely because we, we know there's a lot of knowledge going on with um, like, uh, very resistant bacteria and algae that can live within this. Uh, actually, it's, this is not yet an extreme environment. It's just a slightly mm-hmm. extreme environment yeah. for them. Yeah, even in the deepest part of the ocean, yeah. uh, within um, in what they call in the, in the middle oceanic ridge, where there's yeah. a lot of volcanism also there's a lot of biological activity yeah, yeah so there's just a shift in the metabolism of these organisms that um, will use use up the more, slightly more acidic warm yeah. uh, environments yeah yeah huh so so essentially um you know what if you had you know um 
I don't know, two million pesos and a research ship. What what would the research project be to which you would implement at that spot? I don't know, 10 million pesos. Hello? Uh, there might be something with the connection. Ah, okay. Yeah, I think that... so This is near Taal Volcano. Yeah, so yeah. There's a site in Batangas in um, Anilao. There's yeah. also an area with a lot of bubbles coming out of the seafloor. Yeah. And it's also geothermal. Yeah. The reason is very geothermal. And there, they're actually trying to analyze how corals may. Um, may respond to more acid, acidified waters. Yeah. So they're trying to make an analog of how coral reefs may respond to uh, ocean acidification. Yeah, and, and, and we, yeah. Should, we should, we should mention know, for our viewers, like ocean acidification is coming from CO2, which is coming from uh, fossil fuel burning. And then, so it's, it's, yeah. it's an anthropogenic effect, right? Which is worldwide. And yeah. which is harmful to um, calcium carbonate fix fixation by a coral. So, so essentially, sites like this yeah. can serve as a window in the future. Yeah, it's like more like an analog of what if our oceans are more acidic, mm -hmm, more mm -hmm, warm. Mm -hmm. So maybe you can try some biological biological experiments there. Yeah, 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 growth, yeah. And maybe some other. Uh, you know, other ocean organisms yeah. that maybe you'll try to have, you'll, you'll experiment their adaptation on this uh, enhanced environments or, yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you for your insights. Now, I want to say, I hope yeah. I, I will see you underwater in Apo Island sometime. I hope we can manage uh, that you fly over. Um, then I think I think your your internet or my internet connection is a little bit frozen. Yeah. Um, yeah so thank you very much, and um, uh, see you soon. <laughs>